Now this is gonna be a different type of video than what I normally post up on this channel. Normally all of my videos are focused around helping you advance your career, whether that's something related to your resume, updating your LinkedIn, passing more interviews, or just changing your career. So those are the typical type of videos that I always like to post, but I did wanna talk a little bit about my career journey and why I quit my $125,000 salary management consulting job. So if you're asking yourself, why should I be watching the rest of this video? Like, what is the point? Well, what my goal is with this video is I'm hoping to inspire you, but also to hopefully shift your perspective. Maybe you can recognize some of the similarities in my mindset and how I used to view my job and my career, and maybe you can recognize some of these patterns in your own life. Maybe this will be a really nice video to assure you that you're doing what it is that you are meant to be doing. Or maybe this is the kick you need in the butt to recognize that you are due for change and that you can do better and that you deserve Deserve to be happier when it comes to your job and your career. Last year, I did post a video up on this channel about how I found my dream job and quit my management consulting job, but that video was made quite a while ago. The quality of the video is a bit blurry. I didn't have the same camera and the same editing skills that I have now, so I don't blame you if you didn't actually watch that video. So I'm gonna give you a quick recap about how I quit my job and what I ultimately decided to do as my dream job. So the spark noted version of this is all throughout high school, I was very good at math. Math and science were always my best subjects. And so when it came time to choosing my major in college, I chose finance and accounting because I'm very good at math. Because I chose finance and accounting, this led me down to a career path towards working for one of the big four accounting firms. When I was thinking about which specific job I wanted to get, management consulting seemed to be really interesting to me because I got to leverage my degree and I also would get to travel around the world and do cool projects. Once I started working full-time after graduation, I was quickly identified as a top performer in my consulting group. I received multiple promotions in a three-year time frame, and my salary exploded and nearly doubled in three years. When I graduated college, I started with a base salary of $65,000, and then I got a very good performance review my first year, so it went up to $79,000. Then the next year, I received a promotion to a senior consultant and my base salary increased to 99,000. Then the following year, I got another good performance rating and my base salary when I left was $125,000. So why would I wanna quit a job where I'm getting $20,000 raises every single year and everybody that I work with loves working with me? It seems like such a crazy, irrational decision, right? Well, my parents felt the exact same way. And I knew it was gonna be very hard for me to explain to my parents why I didn't enjoy my job even though I had all of these great benefits and was being compensated very, very well. And it's very uncommon for folks to want to essentially take a big risk and rock the boat when they're doing so well already. So why I actually quit my management consulting job despite all of these really great benefits and things that I had going on really came down to how I view a career that is successful or basically what I believe are the components that make up a job that I would love. And those three components are finding a job that is challenging, finding a job that is interesting, and finding a job that is rewarding. So when I took a step back and looked at my management consulting career, only one of those boxes was really checked and the other two were not, which is why I felt like something was missing and why I felt like I didn't actually love or enjoy my job. I knew that I was good at my job, but I wasn't happy, which was a very strange feeling because all throughout high school and college and my education, normally when I'm good at something, that makes it fun. But once I started working, even though I was good at something, I still didn't enjoy it. So I wanted to understand why that was and what it would need to be for me to actually feel like I loved my job. So to help you understand my perspective, I wanna first talk about what I call the job life cycle. And in the job life cycle, I feel that you will go through these certain phases as you join a new job, join a new team, or even switch careers. You're gonna go through this typical life cycle of a job. So what that looks like, 
in the beginning, when you start a new job or start a new career, everything is going to be fun and challenging and exciting for you because everything is brand new. You need to learn how this company does business. You need to learn how to do your job. You need to learn all these new tools and systems and processes. So you're constantly going to be learning and drinking from the fire hose, which for most people is going to be challenging and exciting work. So it's going to feel like you enjoy your job in the beginning. Then as you move through the job life cycle, eventually you will become a master at your job. You won't have as many questions anymore. You'll understand the business. You'll understand the product. You'll understand what you're doing and you're going to get very good at it. Then once you are able to master your job, that's when you're going to be able to finally take a step back and take a perspective on what it is that you're actually doing and if it brings you joy. And that's basically the life cycle that I went through when I started my consulting career. I worked so hard to get this opportunity, right? I was the only person in my university for the last 11 years to get a management consulting position right from undergrad. So because I worked so hard to get here and I knew that it was going to be challenging and this job was quite difficult, you always have to learn new industries, new products, new clients, new sectors. You're constantly being challenged intellectually to learn new things. But once I was able to master my job, understand what it is that I'm doing, how I'm helping my clients, I was then able to realize that all of the excitement was just because I like learning. It's not actually because I like the job. So the second reason I quit was basically because the job was no longer interesting to me. When I took a step back and started to analyze and think about what I really did day to day as a consultant, it was basically working in Excel building out pivot tables, doing analysis, and then building PowerPoint decks based on the data and analysis that I do in Excel. And then in the PowerPoint presentations, I'm typically building out process documents or highlighting key findings and then taking edits and revisions from my manager and staying all the way up until four in the morning working on tight deadlines. Then as I worked with my client counterparts or basically people whose jobs I would be getting when I leave consulting and seeing what they do on a daily basis, which is not much different than what I was doing. Sure, they were getting paid more than I was, but the job and the responsibilities and the core things that I would be doing are basically going to be the same things. Plus, none of the clients that I worked with on the business side seemed to be happy. No one really seemed to love their job. It just seemed to be a paycheck for them, which I totally understand. You get paid a lot of money to do certain jobs that you are good at. And if you are good at something, you should get paid for it, right? Well, at least that's what I thought. And the third and probably biggest reason as to why I quit my job is because I realized that my job was not rewarding enough. As a consultant, your job is to come in and figure out and diagnose problems that a business may have and then present multiple solutions or recommendations to eventually resolve that problem. So typically that involves around either reducing cost or increasing revenue, sometimes a combination of the two. So what am I actually doing and who am I really helping in my job? Well, in my opinion, the only people that I was actually helping were the executives at these companies who were sponsoring us and basically making them look really good with all of our work, time and hours that I were putting in for them. All the people that I worked with who were not the executive teams actually didn't enjoy working with me because I was essentially creating more work for them. Or as they saw it sometimes, I would be finding ways to create efficiencies that would eliminate their job so that they wouldn't have a job anymore. So a lot of the people that we worked with were not always in the best of moods, which makes a lot of sense when you think about the point of hiring a consulting firm to come and work on one of your projects. So as someone who really gets joy out of helping people, being in service of others or thinking about ways where I can truly impact and benefit someone's life or someone's day even just to make someone smile or to make someone happy. Those were things that I was not able to do in my opinion as a management consultant. And so that is why I didn't feel like this job was rewarding for me personally. And that's when I decided to take a few weeks off and to figure out what it is and what it would look like for me to actually help people. So when I was thinking about what my job would need to be so that I could check those three boxes, right? What would be something that's interesting? What would be something that is rewarding? What would be something that is challenging for me? I decided to fall on a career in recruiting because I truly feel that it checks all of those boxes. And I also want to point out that when you're thinking about if your job is rewarding, 
Financial rewards is one component of it, but I truly don't think that should be the biggest reason or biggest reward that you should be focusing on. When I think about a job that is rewarding for me, I need to be thinking about what is it that makes me feel good? What about a job or, or my responsibilities or what I do on a daily basis will make me find enjoyment and fulfillment in life? That is the true reward that I think everybody should be focusing on. One of the biggest myths around careers is everyone's definition of success. A lot of people associate success with wealth and material things or status or prestige of working at certain companies. But to me, I truly feel that a successful career looks like someone who loves their job, who loves to go into work, who isn't looking forward to the weekends, who loves to go in on Monday mornings, doesn't have the Sunday scaries, someone who truly feels like what they do and get paid for is a privilege. That to me is why I started the Career Shakers YouTube channel. That to me is why I started the Career Shakers business to help people find a job that they love and build a career plan for them so that you can actually be rewarded for something that you love to do that is interesting and challenging. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, I just wanted to say thank you so much for listening to my journey. Hopefully some of my perspective can give you a different mindset or a different perspective on how you need to be thinking about your career. And if you are already in a job that checks all of these boxes for you, then that is amazing. I think you should put a comment down below and let the community know what is you, it is that you do for a living so that people can explore your job and see if it's a good fit for them. Thank you all for watching this video. I really do appreciate your time and attention and I'll see you in the next one.